Resilience Radio is welcoming in a state, like not just a member of in a state, but I feel like we have the entire in a state. Welcome, Adrian Wall, Lawrence Balin, and Rylan <laughs> Cody. Say it again, Lawrence. Correct me. It's, uh, Lawrence Bailon. Okay, Bailon. Bailon, like okay. by my lonesome. <laughs> oh, that's sad. That's like, funny. I'm just glad that uh, you're the only one I had the issue with. <laughs> so, that, that's good. And it's one issue. So what the heck? In a state, res reggae. I got your album. You got a new single, and we're in the middle of a pandemic. So what the heck is going on, you guys? Ooh, let's see. Well, it's more the lack thereof of going on really these days. Let's see. It's been nice actually. Um, uh, with all the COVID stuff going on, it's been a chance for all of us to kind of step away from playing, playing out so much and uh, giving us a chance to focus on different aspects of our lives. Well, you know, like I can't speak for everybody, obviously, but it's definitely been that for me. And uh, it's been nice to actually be able to really work on some new music because during 2019, after we um, released our album and we did uh, Native American Music Awards that year, we were just playing out, playing out, playing out. And that was, you know, great. But this last year really gave us a chance to just work on some new tunes and, you know, refine what we already had as well. And that's kind of the way we've always worked with um, uh, writing music, in my opinion, anyways. But I don't know. Uh, what do you guys? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it was a lot like that. It's kind of crazy. Um... You know, we had a lot of stuff planned for this year, like most musicians. Um, we've been working really hard and got, got that cool award end of last year, or a, a year, a little over a year ago. And so we had a lot of stuff booked and it just all went away. And uh, we kind of went to our own corners kind of to ride this thing out. But, um, you know, this spring we put out um, versions of the, the, the single we just put out and um, another song we're working on now. And, um, but it was kind of nice to take a break from everybody and not be like, well, I'll see you next weekend or whatever and, and hit the road. But um, it, it was kind of interesting. Like Ryland said, I've been kind of hanging out with my family at home and um, just kind of doing other things. Um, but lately, we've kind of been missing playing music. So we've been getting together as much as possible, as much as COVID will permit. We um, recorded this new single. Um, we actually recorded it and sent it to a, a mixer to, to mix the album for our mix of the song for us. So it's kind of interesting how things are working these days. And I'm really excited about working like this. Well, Lawrence seems all chill and mellow, like he lost weight or started jogging or became vegan. Or like, you know what I mean? He seemed like the kind of person who would do something good during COVID. Is that true, Lawrence? Uh, no, I actually gained weight during COVID. <laughs> like, chill it. Chill it. I think all of us did. We're all just like not doing anything. So I don't know what the I, deal I is. I got really good at cooking. I mean, really good. It's dangerously good. I'll be yeah, I, I, just, I just went camping a bunch and like, yeah, just doing things I like hiking and things like that. So um, that's kind of mainly it. But now, you know, like, like Adrian's saying, we worked on a couple of these tunes and I think it's just kind of more time to start working on stuff. Cause it's been, I don't know, I'm starting to miss it for sure. And I know these guys are. And so like, uh, it's just been nice to, I don't know, it's just been nice to get together, even though we're not being able to play shows or anything like that. So but it's well, nice to hang out with these guys because we don't always. A year. This has been a year at this point, Lawrence, right. a year. This isn't like a few month hiatus. We're going on an entire year, not high-fiving and hugging and being with each other. It's been about <laughs> a year since we played, like last January or February. Yeah, I think I think the last gig I played was not even with In a State, it was with Eye Conscious, but I think it was like March 31st or March 30th or something like that. Oh, right. And so, yeah, me and Rylan actually played that show together uh, with Kurt. And so it's, yeah, it's almost been like an entire year since I played an actual gig over at the launch pad or something like that. So who plays what? Who does who? Because it looks like Adrian has his stuff together with the record, you know, padded things, soundproofing, you know, clean shirt. So who does what around <laughs> there? I like okay. your uh, background, Adrian. I like how all the pictures are in the back too. Yeah. <laughs> Like we did, none of us tried. I'm in a sewing room. Lawrence is on a couch. <laughs> I'm chilling on the couch. Adrian's got like his whole backdrop. It's all nice he's, and everything. He's secretly <laughs> playing Xbox during this interview. No right. big deal. 
<laughs> okay, so who does what? Okay, who does what is a more accurate uh, way to ask that question at one point. Who does who? I'm like, hmm, <laughs> none of us. No, I'm kidding. But no, all right, my bad, Adrian. I, I interrupted you. No, so Rylan, he plays bass and sings. Um, I, I play a little bit of guitar and sing, or I play guitar and sing. And Lawrence is a, is a drummer. I play the fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> but he's really bad at it, so we make him play the drums. <laughs> So well, why in our music why, video I play uh, I play bass so oh yeah there you go right totally oh you played a uh, lead guitar oh is that what oh yeah I played Carlos guitar never mind I can't tell the difference bake it till you make it I guess is what's happening here <laughs> so why up. why reggae because Ryland seems kind of more of a rocker through and through. You know, um, Adrian looks like a rezzed out Carlos Santana, you know, so <laughs> how did you guys land on the, the reggae vibe? Well, it's a long story. I mean, I could, t I mean, we all have different perspectives on how we came to start playing. We music. got time. Okay. Well, um, for me, I've, I've always loved reggae music. And I think all of us in the band grew up playing metal music as musicians. We learned to play music, playing metal. And so, um, but I've always loved that reggae vibe. And um, back a long time ago, I was in this band called Red Earth and we used to mess around, incorporate a lot of reggae music into what we're doing. And I was actually the first bass player for Native Roots, the, the, the perennial native reggae band. I was really bad at playing reggae bass back then, but um, that's why I'm, <laughs> I don't think I lasted but a couple of gigs. But, um, you know, that, that's always been an influence for me. I used to write a lot of reggae music for, for Red Earth and reggae and ska music is always, kind of resonated with me. I like I like major writing and major keys and things like that. So um, yeah, so it's for me, it's just a really cool way of writing writing music. It's I'm not a religious person per se. I'm not like a Rastafarian or anything like that. And then I don't really follow that culture, but I love the music and um, I, we have our own culture. And so we're able to express a little bit of that in, in that as well as like what we do. Um, so, um, you know, I didn't play music for many years, like maybe 10 years. I went to school for a while, went through a divorce, all this crazy stuff. And then I started writing music again. And then like I was writing all these reggae songs. So I reached out to Rylan and say, man, you want to start a band? And he was like, he just left his band like two years before that or a year or so. And um, that's kind of how Rylan and I, well, Rylan and I played music before that. And there's some reggae elements in that as well. But um, yeah, we've all got our journeys. Well, Rylan, to go from metal, were you like pumped about this reggae thing or were you just joining a <laughs> band to help your friend out? You know, you're like, fine. Well, um, it goes a few different things actually. So me and Ad I've known Adrian since I was like born essentially. Um, him and my father were really good friends, um, best friends, some people might even say. And um, that being the case, Adrian was already a part of my life for a good majority of the time. And my dad, he's a great drummer actually. It's kind of funny because me and Lawrence have become really good friends and Lawrence is a Pisces I'm a Virgo I play bass Lawrence plays drums Adrian is a Virgo he plays bass and my dad's a Pisces and he plays drums there's like this I don't know Weird. just this interesting yeah like kind of uncanny uh connection going on between all of us I feel like and me Lawrence and my father are all Santa Clara Pueblo as well you know like there's just all these things that kind of like I think we're already leading up to us playing together. But anyways, um, I remember my dad, um, uh, when he started getting back into music, because he took a bit of a hiatus um, when I was younger, when he started getting back into music, he went, he would go and hang out with Adrian and Akama. And I was very close to my father when I was young. So I always wanted to go with him places, you know what I mean? And so I would end up uh going um, to Akama with my dad and Adrian was there. So Adrian and I, you know, started getting to know each other a little more and they would always jam out. And every once in a while, Adrian and uh, my dad, I jam with them too. And they had this other group called Twin Rivers and uh, they both um, tried to get me to play bass for them for a while. And eventually I started playing bass with that group and so me and Adrian already had a working relationship okay. before this band you know and so when Adrian hit me up about starting something new like I had been taking a break from music and it was just like a perfect time and just a perfect storm for everything because I'm already a 
big songwriter in well in my mind i'm i like to write music is what i mean and then adrian um adrian's a great songwriter and the way it's worked out for both of our creative forces has been really interesting and then you add lawrence to the component and lawrence well i should let him like uh say how he met us and whatnot but no you like know, lawrence? It, yeah Where yeah go land on this lawrence well like i i mean because same thing with these guys you know i listened to a lot of metal and stuff like that growing up uh i had a lot of siblings they listened to a bunch of genres of music um so of course reggae was always kind of in there but it was never something i was like that interested in uh pursuing up until like 2014 after i got kind of tired of playing metal and <clears throat> was just something i wanted to do you know i listened to a lot of punk and they had a lot of ska and reggae influence in it and so that kind of like uh kind of just led me on another journey to like go down this road and of course like i said i i had already heard reggae uh at some point in my early life so it wasn't like foreign or anything to me but it looked fun and so I put out a post on Craigslist and I was just like, Hey, I'm looking for a group or start looking to start a band or something like that. And, uh, these guys ended up hitting me up together. One was texting me. One was like sending me emails and I thought there were two different like groups or something. And I was like, okay, well, cool. I'll hit up these people first and then I'll go hit up this one and see what, you know, what I think would be like a good fit to play. And so I ended up going to Adrian's house when he lived in Santa Fe and, I was like, oh, hey, uh, yeah, I got all my stuff and everything. He's like, no, it's cool, man. I got like a drum kit here and whatever. And I was like, all right, well, cool. I guess that like saves me a trip. You know, I don't have to like take all my shit. But oh, sorry. I don't know if we can like. I'll fix thing. it. You okay. need to try not uh, to... Are you guys <laughs> the only good thing that came out of Craigslist? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, men seeking men is a good connection. <laughs> you <know? laughs> You're not supposed to tell him that's where we found you, man. I know, right after I disproved the uh, who does who, he's like, well, it was men seeking men how they found me. <laughs> yeah, my, my ad was in the music section. I looked them up on men seeking men, so. Whatever works. It's 21. Whatever non-binary, non-drummer, whatever you subscribe to, we'll respect it. <laughs> no, but I'm no, just kidding. So but anyway, so know? that... Did you know that you already kind of all of them by the time you met? No, actually, I didn't. I had known uh, Ryland's brother and his dad, like, not really by, like, hanging out with them or anything like that, but just, you know, by their last name, of course, like, because uh, the Kabodi last name is, like, you know, it's not like, I don't know. I don't know how to say this, but, you know, I've heard it before, and I already knew kind of, like, his brother, but I didn't know Ryland. I didn't uh, hang out with him or anything. It's kind of funny because we, like, kind of were around the same people growing up and stuff like that but I me and him had never connected at any point um and the the connection with Adrian actually wasn't ever really there either up until the start of this group but it's funny because his nephew had a drum set of his old band Red Earth and that's like how I knew Red Earth I was like oh that's a cool like drum set and I used to play it all the time like when we were at his house yeah I gave him I gave my nephew that drum set yeah, and then when when I went to Adrian's uh, house, he was like, "Oh yeah, I used to play for this band Red Earth," and I was like, "Hey, my friend had a drum kit that said Red Earth on the front," <laughs> and so that's kind of how like it's kind of how we all like had this weird interconnection between each other, but didn't ever really know each other too. So I mean, those two knew each other. I didn't know them. So are you a songwriter too, Lawrence? Or you just sit back and let them do all the work? Uh, I like to write stuff, but I don't think it's very good, so I <laughs> don't always keep it. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I will work on lyrics like a little bit with these guys when they're writing it, but it's never like a prominent thing for me to keep doing it. So I hear let you. Me, let me add to that real quick. Um, so me and Adrian, um, Lawrence used to work this job where he would work like um, really early mornings. And it was usually like, during the times that we would be playing gigs. So we'd play a, a weekend gig and then the next morning he'd have to like, not even the next morning, he'd have to split right after the gig. You know what I mean? To like make sure he would go to sleep and get up for work early in the morning and whatnot. But anyway, so when this was all the case, me and Adrian actually like confronted Lawrence and we were like, Hey man, you know, like 
we're having to give up some gigs like you know because of your work schedule you know is it cool with you if we like try to get another drummer to play with us for certain gigs and you know Lawrence was like yeah you know like my work schedule isn't ideal so you know you guys do you that's fine and we tried to work with another drummer and oh my gosh like instantly we were just like this isn't gonna work like this like isn't even close to gonna work and so Lawrence um he doesn't necessarily bring the song ideas like um all the time or whatnot but I don't know, like Lawrence is integral, like completely to writing our music. Like this, this right here is the songwriting trio of In a State and it, it wouldn't work any other way. I kid you not. So how do you fire a musician? Do you just like ghost him and never, you know, <laughs> hey, maybe we could, Adrian, maybe you could answer this. Oh man, I'm, I'm the executioner, I guess. No, I mean, it, it's typical. Usually, usually it's, it's, you know, it's something that, that's agreed upon. Um, I don't think we've ever had to fire anybody per se, have we? Well, I yes. don't like the drummer. Yeah, that didn't did. work. yeah I guess so. We, yeah, but that was the, at least two guitarists. That's I true. Know that. That's true. That's true. It never I goes know. well. I mean, sometimes it's, it's a mutual thing. Sometimes pe feelings get hurt because music's kind of personal too. And it's, it's really hard to, um, it's hard to kind of deal with that kind of stuff. But when it's not working, it's not working. Yeah, there was two guitarists we didn't had to part ways with, I remember. That was pretty early on. Um, we've always kind of had this idea that, or, or this belief that if we just keep playing the best music we can, and keep writing the best songs we can, and um, have the best, um, I guess, presentation that we possibly can, that musicians will come, they'll, they'll come. And it's kind of worked out that way. Well, early on though, we were, we were struggling finding guitar players and things like that who were able to keep up, I should say, um, musically. And so we had to let a couple go. So what that did was, it feel like? Pleasure. What did it feel like when you guys realized that it clicked? Like we are here, we are the in a state. <laughs> Let's see. So me and Adrian, like I said, you know, we had worked together prior to, but when we started getting together, when Adrian invited me over a couple of times, we would get together weekly. And um, that was the first time I had actually worked with Adrian on a creative level, like for writing or crafting music. And holy crap, Adrian's, I, could, I cannot express enough, like what a great songwriter Adrian is. Like to well, the, man. like, I, I don't know, like, it's something totally different. It's something that I hadn't really experienced before. I, I was into a lot more like uh, rowdy music when I was younger. And when I started hanging out with Adrian, you know, like, it was at a turning point in my musical life where I was getting into a lot more new wave. I was getting into, I don't know, just a lot of different genres, like for myself and you know, starting to work with Adrian songwriting wise was a perfect time for that. Cause I started realizing like, okay, so <laughs> me and Adrian are both Virgos and this probably isn't the greatest songwriting dynamic either. Cause <laughs> both of us will let each other know, you know, it's like, Hey, that thing in that song, like, no, that's not going to work. Or, you know, like, this is how you should do it. And, you know, like, it doesn't always, I think over the years, we've gotten a lot better about working together and being um, critical of each other's work. But I don't know, like for me, it was it made a lot of sense to me when I started working with Adrian songwriting wise, because it wasn't to create a song or to jam or like any like one part of songwriting. It was how can we create the best possible experience musically? and the best journey to tell the story that we're trying to tell at the moment. So for me, that's totally how I work when it comes to music. That's what I like to listen to. That's what I really appreciate music wise. And then when we met Lawrence, I don't know, it just really just felt so right. Like it, it, it just was like, there wasn't any other way it could possibly go. When he started playing with us, it was like, Oh, this is our dude, like he gets what we're doing. And we already had a few songs together by that point. But after that, then it just, the rest was history in my opinion. But you know, I don't know what these guys think. Well, Lord when I... Pisces, so he's just gonna lean into whatever. Like he doesn't want your drama <laughs> over what word goes with it. 
<laughs> uh, well, when I started when I started playing with these guys, uh, like, cause this is like my first real real band. You know what I mean? Like, I've played with people all the time, but I never really like started a group with anybody. It was just like, let's jam out and have some fun and do some stuff. And and I've tried pursuing like the band thing with friends, but like, just you know, life happens. All of, all of them can't you know commit to that sort of thing. And it's something I've always wanted to do. And so when I like put up that ad and I met these guys, like they had music ready and like things like that. Adrian, of course, like he's taught me a bunch just from like how he, like, I don't even know some of the stuff he still like talks about. And I'm just like, that's cool. But I'm glad you know that. Cause I wouldn't know how to do that. And then same thing with Ryland, like he's a great singer. And so like, it was almost just like a real, everything just kind of meshed the way I would have wanted to like people who are actually committed to making music and want to make music and have fun with it and not just like it be just work you know like hold on so you just craigslisted met these dudes made an album and then just won an award (laughs) pretty much yeah (laughs) gee there's a lot of work in between that though there's a ton of work that's not what i'm hearing i'm hearing you guys did the work and he's like yo you like this beat cool (laughs) where's my nami right but the thing is, I mean, the number one thing about being in a band is you got to show up, you know, you have to show up and be ready to work. And and that, and these guys do that. You know, it's amazing. I don't know. I dig it. I dig it. We've had many member drives and CD giveaways that you guys have participated in and people eat them up. Nom, 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 nom. And so <laughs> there's something about what you're doing, but I'm, I'm going to ask it. Are you culturally appropriating reggae? I think it was more about appropriating the culture as well. You know, we all had dreads and we're all, you know, I mean, there are some things that we borrow. Yeah, for sure. The, the musical style is the main thing. Um, sometimes like some of the Patois, I have another a song, we're song coming out now where I borrow a little bit of Patois just because, I mean, I like the way it sounds and it works with the song. Um, I don't consider it appropriating, you know, I think also, I think we have a lot of common with the culture that created reggae music. I mean, we're an oppressed people and it's a way of letting people hear our stories from a, um, a musical perspective that we, we enjoy playing, you know? I mean, it's an expression. And yeah, it's like any other tool in the toolbox, if you ask me, you know, I mean, it's, I, I get it. I get how people would say that, but I don't I'm feel just that. asking, I'm not, cause it's like, I shot the res cop but the, my cousin was the deputy, you know, I don't know. I don't know how this works out. Was it checkpoint okay. security or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think so though. I mean, definitely, I mean, it's a cultural music for sure, but, but it is just a, a musical style. I mean, it's also, I think reggae music kind of spans, I mean, it, it touches a lot of people. I love music from, from the Polynesian area, you know, the poly reggae sound is, I think, amazing to me. And Polynesian people embraced it. And it's, it's pretty amazing, that music coming from down there. Um, that's a lot different than island music from Jamaica. Um, England is really big with ska music, you know, and that's kind of the first, my first exposure to reggae music came from ska music, really, and, and the reggae stuff I heard a long time ago, Jamaican stuff too. But like to play it came from playing ska, and so yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's a lot. I guess we're more more of a global kind of space now, headspace where you know it's not um, so regional anymore. It's just kind of it's been added to the palette of sounds that that the world uses. Yeah. You know? So I see what you're saying. Like if you guys were dreaded out trying to be Rastafari, you know, do I totally get it. So you're kind of honoring that sound and expanding upon that sound with your cultural experience. You're not trying to embody, you're not pretending to be Jamaican man with, with your baddie bum boy. Right, and, and I feel like we're not really a reggae band. We play reggae music, but we're also more than that. We're I want to say more than that because I don't want to discount like what reggae bands are. I want to say that we have other influences that we incorporate. I mean, Rylan, for instance, you know, he brings so much to the band. The single that we just put out, when we're recording it, I was just like, nah, you know, this doesn't sound like a reggae song. Let's let's go with like the spirit of it. And when we're recording, we, we added some things that made, to me, it sounded like a kind of an indie tune, but has this reggae vibe to it. And and I, I just kind of embraced that. I, I thought it was important to embrace it because that's our sound. That's who we are. We're not pretending to be somebody else, not pretending to be a Jamaican band, a roots band. We are in a state. And um, 
I thought it was important that we just kind of pursue that that sound. And I thought it came out great. So Rylan, what would you call yourselves if you're not just reggae, like rock gay? I don't, I, <laughs> how, how would you define you if you had to write a paragraph? Let's see, well, okay, so there's bands like, and you know, I'm not comparing us to these bands. I'm just saying there are bands like Deftones, like Radiohead, like, hmm, here's another good example. Like even Red Earth actually was a really good example where, I mean, I think we're not really conforming to a systemic part of the music industry, which is we have to be marketed a certain way, mm -hmm. except that we are in branding ourselves as a reggae band. I mean, we're not a reggae band, but that's the easiest way as far as the general listener goes to market our music to somebody who is curious about it. It's like, okay, well, if we had to like put a genre on it, if that's something that you conform to as a listener, that's fine. The closest thing is probably going to be reggae. But I mean, like for me, like all the best bands, and again, I'm not comparing us to those necessarily, um, all the best bands, you know, like have a sound that's only them. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm you can't really categorize it into genres. It's like, oh, that's the way they sound. And that's always the way they're going to sound, whether or not they're delving into other genres, you know? And I think that's something that we've always strived to do as a band, you know, like how Lawrence was saying, you know, um, he put that ad out on Craigslist and his ad said, you know, reggae and ska, but when I texted Lawrence, he was like, oh yeah, you know, like, I really like Thrice, I really like, and he mentioned a couple other, you know, post-hardcore slash, you know, emo bands, and for me, like, I'm like, that's right up my alley, and, you know, like, the... No, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's actually what I was going to say, too. The generational <laughs> aspect of our band has actually lent its uh, hand in our genre as well, you know, Adrian's, like, a little older than both of us, and... We're a little oh. younger than him. <laughs> We're a little yeah, younger yeah. than him. And, you know, it fuses into something really that it's, that is its own. And I think it kind of pertains to what Adrian was just saying and what you were just asking about, you know, like cultural appropriation. We're not like really trying to appropriate even other genres. We're trying to make something that's special to ourselves, you know, and I think that's always the way we've approached trying to write music. And that's, the only way we could with all of our different influences and our personalities, honestly. So I don't know if I would necessarily stamp a genre on it, but you know, like reggae is the easiest way to market it. You know what I mean? And, and just our playing styles, you know, we all like, we all pulled influences from different things that we all listen to. Not all of us, you know, like have the same, you know, tastes in music. We all enjoy it, but you know, like I, I enjoy like, you know, just of course, like I had the emo, like thrice, like kind of era and things like that and whatever. And so, um, but now, you know, I like to pull influences from like Polyphia and like how the drummer plays like that. And he has like all these weird odd timings and animals as leaders and things like that stuff. Like that really interests me. And I try to bring that into the way I play and incorporate that into our group. And, but I also like to dig deep into like the reggae realm and listen to how these players uh you know how they really get down into it and see if i can mesh the two of those into what i like to do and see if that works with our group and that's kind of you know we all like i said we all have different um influences and so we're all just trying to bring those in into one big boiling pot basically well, you have this benefit of these different age groups. See how I did that politely? Bringing in, <laughs> you know, these eras of influence. What? I'm old. Old. So I got to protect Adrian because I'm old. You know, you guys are like, <laughs> your name and band. I'm like, totally. Yeah, for sure. Thrice. Whatever. I was about to say, I think I just got thrown under the bus somehow. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, stop <laughs> aging us. God. <laughs> But that's so, again, now how frustrating that you have to stamp a something on it. Because I would think alternative 
or indie or I mean, resi isn't a music genre yet. And, yeah, it is. Uh, oh, go ahead, yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty in tune to what's happening in the native music world, and I really like looking at the bands coming out of Navajo Nation and that kind of stuff. You know, State Line, and those those bands are really great, and they're pretty resi. You know, they got this sound that's unique. You know, um, not that that we're going to be playing any of that stuff, but I really admire those guys and they have a following. It's pretty cool. So I think there is like a, a genre that's pretty res. I mean, we got um, new young singers kind of copying that style too. Country res, calling it res country or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, where oh. can people follow you, connect with you, buy your stuff, look at your stuff, send you friend requests, please accept mine, Lawrence. Um, things like that. <laughs> Um, Instagram, Facebook, um, where else? Right let's on? say yeah, if so. you have merch. Let's say I want to buy all your stuff today. What do I do? You have to call Rylan. He, he's the merch guy. <laughs> it's called Message Rylan. Rylan on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, we, we haven't been pushing that stuff lately. It's like, um, because of the COVID. Because of the COVID. Um, we probably should, you know, start revamping that. I, I can't say we're the best businessmen either. We're kind of more. We just want to play shows, you know, um, but I realize that that part of that success is going to depend on our financial ability to keep that going as well. Um, making CDs and recording is um, expensive. And um, yeah, it's something we should actually concentrate on a little bit. Well, but do yeah. you have things like your new your new single seeds? Is it like pay a dollar downloadable it or is it, you know, yep. how do how do we do your, cause I want to help. I don't want to help cause I'm going to get your stuff for free. Um, <laughs> I want other people to, uh, you no, guys are uh, never going to talk to me again. It's okay. I love you. I'm not going to accept your friend request. <laughs> Lawrence, <laughs> I speak. Okay. So yeah, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we even have a Twitter, but we're not super active on that. Like I still am not super about Twitter myself. But anyways, um, we're on all streaming, uh, major streaming platforms. We're on Spotify. That's something we pushed pretty hard. Uh, we're on Apple Music. We're on iTunes. Yeah, you can buy our music there. You can also buy it on uh, Your Amazon. website? Yeah, there you go. Let's see. We've got a website, which is www.inestate.net. Let's spell that. In the I-N-N-A. State. If you would let me, Jennifer, I was just about to actually. <laughs> I'm just Let's so see. excited. I'm just so excited. Go ahead. Let's see. So Adrian's actually got that logo up there. Oh, darn it, Adrian. I'm going to bring it up here. See. Okay, so our the name of our band, again, is In a State. That is I-N-N-A State, the way you would spell that. It's all one word. But, um, yeah, we're an indigenous reggae rock band out of um, New Mexico down southwest in the u.s so but yeah we're on all streaming platforms we've got our website again www.inestate.net so um, you can message us there we've got a email way to contact us up there there you go adrian <laughs> let's see and then um yeah all of us are on facebook and whatnot if you particularly want to friend any of us i can't imagine we would decline lawrence <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It gets weird out there. Um, it's Facebook because it's like you have to have a presence, but that means you have to deal with people. So I'm I'm very conflicted. For two years, my New Year's resolution was to remember my Twitter password, and I still haven't even attempted. So. Let's. Do you yeah, guys? Social media is true. <laughs> what was that, Jen? Do you guys have a MySpace? That's that's where I'm comfortable. Just kidding. I don't. Hey, Adrian, Adrian, Adrian yeah. we, we he just still has it. ourselves. Oh my Is goodness! Is still there? I should check. Oh my goodness! Me, me and Donald Trump. Yeah, the last <laughs> one on my stage. <laughs> oh my gosh! I so, didn't think about. Um, are there things, CDs, you guys had stickers, is all that stuff, if they um, contact through the website, or Bug Rylan, is that stuff still available for purchase? A way to actually. Um, be about that probably would uh best would probably be to go like our facebook page or uh follow us on instagram and message us on either of those um i'm all of us are very active on all of that 
And if you want a CD um, or stickers, that's primarily what we have right now. We've got, um, well, I can mail you whatever you need or whatnot. And um, yeah, that's, that's totally doable though. Easy AF. Easy AF. I'm so excited. So let's say COVID clears up by the summertime. Are you guys ready to rock? Are you ready to go? Are you yeah, ready to get back on the sure. stage? Well, you know, it's it takes a while to to make those connections again. And that start hasn't started happening yet. People aren't ready to book yet. So like it, it's just not happening right now. Um I, I wish it was. So we're probably looking at the fall and spring, winter for for booking if we start now. It's kind of crazy, but that's the way it goes. So I think our focus right now is we got these two single, we got the single that just came out. Next month we're gonna release another one. And then we're gonna just finish it, add a few more songs and finish up an album. This is the goal for the summer. So, um, you know, if we can't play out, we'll, we'll do that. Another single next month. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. So Adrian, do you actually play? I know this is radio and they can't see. Do you actually play all those instruments behind you or you just have them there I to look do. like you know what you're doing? Yeah, so the way, yeah, I do. I'm, I'm a bass player originally and um, got into guitar recent or over the last few years. And so, yeah, um, learning to play keyboards, just mostly for recording purposes. Um, I don't, I doubt I'll ever be a performance pianist. I just don't have the chops, but yeah, um, the way we've been recording basically is we're writing songs here. Then we'll go back and take them to Lawrence and record everything, record all our stuff and then send them to somebody to mix them and master them. And um, that's how we're getting this done. And it's great too, because our horn players, we can't really hang out with them because of COVID. So we're just emailing files all over the place. Um, the next single we're gonna release is gonna actually feature Hartson, which is we're really excited about. Um, Brown and, fist yeah, emoji. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's, it's great working like this. I love working. I mean, I've never done anything like this before. It was always like, see everybody in person, you sit down in the studio and record and you're done. But now it's like, everybody's got these home studios of great quality. And um, we're just bouncing files all over the place to make songs. So does Lauren really play the ukulele or whatever? What did you say, the banjo? Do you really play that? No, I don't play the fiddle, no. I know how to play uh, like three chords on guitar. I can play uh, a mean triangle. Um, we need more cowbell. <laughs> no, that joke's overdone. You can't say that anymore. He had to promise <laughs> cowbell. Sorry, yeah, I, I, I yeah. During COVID, I had to pawn my cowbell because I was not making any money. <laughs> Things get weird. Out there. <laughs> no, I mean I only know how to really play drums. That's like my primary instrument. I started off playing guitar, but I hated it. So, and I like think I can still get into it, but I don't enjoy it. So it's not that fun. <laughs> Nobody wants to see you there crying, playing your three chords, completely miserable. Just leave it alone. Yeah, I could make a whole reggae song with those three chords. So. <laughs> He could go play with ACDC maybe, but that's about it. <laughs> I love it. I am a huge fan. Um, can people in a state on the Spotify or whatever streaming services, are you guys there? Yeah, totally. We're on every major streaming service. So we're on Amazon Music. We're on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, YouTube. like all of it, really. Let's see. I think, yeah, just about anything. So yeah, Google us or whatever. And check out everything that we're doing or not doing these days <laughs> well let's take a minute and talk about seeds because that is our station debut release how exciting let's see so uh we had the opportunity of working with a local promotional company um called amp concerts down here in new mexico um they got a grant from uh falling colors foundation right adrian Correct. Yeah, let's see. They got a grant from them to do a, a series of uh, postcards uh, from Santa Fe is what they were calling them. They're essentially uh, music videos from different artists around New Mexico. And uh, the way they went about it is they would choose different locales, different um, particular spaces to um, film these music videos. And um, we were selected as one of the artists to do that. Adrian, uh, can you uh, keep doing this? I've got to go check out something. <laughs> Hi. He's burning his tamales. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, bye. So yeah, it was great. Um, so they approached us with this. I mean, we sent them a couple songs that we had kind of 
um, you were you're demoing and they like seeds a lot. So um, we started working on recording it. And um, yeah, that's kind of that same process I just it just um, told you about. And um, so we went up to Santa Fe and they, they shot the, the, the video at the Museum of um, Art, IAIA's um, Museum of Contemporary Native Art, Mokna. And uh, it's a really cool video if you get the chance to check it out because it, it features all this artwork, especially from this one exhibit called, um, what was it called, Lawrence? Um, I should know this. Blah, 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 blah. Is that the Star Wars one you're talking about? Well, yeah, it was. It was I forgot what it's I don't, called. I don't remember the uh, I don't remember the exact name of it at the moment. Yeah, but it's really cool because it features all this native art, and um, yeah, really amazing, cool, cool video. Actually, I like it. Now and the, the video and the song makes came out more really cool. sense. I get it now because when you posted postcards from Santa Fe series, yeah. I was like, "What? I'm confused." And then it's you guys and your song, so I got even more confused. So I get it now. I get it. It's a yeah. musical. It's a musical postcard. Right. Right. Yeah. So then, yeah, yeah, I think that the idea behind that series was to um, highlight some of the music from New Mexico and um, some of the, and kind of promote tur tourism in Santa Fe, because all of the music, all the music videos kind of highlight a different area of town. It's kind of cool. And they also have like different genres of music, you know, different right. styles rather than just like the reggae music you hear from us or anything like that. Yeah, it's like country and folk and Hispanic music and um, salsa and all kinds of cool stuff. Who did the artwork for Seeds? Mm, the mighty JCBL. Oh my goodness. That dude is amazing. JCBL is his name. Jennifer, if you don't already know him, you definitely should. That's another friend request on Facebook you should be getting at. That dude's amazing. He actually did the artwork for our um, album, our debut album, Third Day, as well. Um, he's incredible. I actually met him through Adrian. Adrian already had the contact and um, he's been really great about working with us in particular, which has always, you know, been really nice for me. Um, I hit him up for uh, this single, maybe like four, three weeks ago. And yeah, he, his turnaround was great for this particularly. He's, he's, He's a fan of our music and we're a huge fan of his and it's always been a great cross promotional relationship as far as that goes. Yay, what's his name again? J C Bial. Bial. Okay, let's see what pops up. I don't know. I'll stalk him later. I'm not gonna go <laughs> let you guys go through this. Ah, okay. In a state dot net, Facebook. Instagram, a dead tweeter. I appreciate <laughs> you guys being here with me and seeing your faces and, and poking each one of you. Lawrence, I'm praying for you, my little Pisces partner. <laughs> um, I, I really am. I, I understand what you're going through with this Virgo on Virgo-ness. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. It's like a special kind of sage to get through you guys. I'm gonna say. <laughs> now we uh, all work out pretty a very good. Special very special sage. Very special sage. Adrian Wall, Ryland Capote, Lawrence <laughs> Balone. Thank you for being part of my program today. Happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Peace. Bye. Bye.